Would you pray with me? Come Holy Spirit and inspire our hearts. Raise us to the place where we may receive the very word of God. Fill us with your love and send us forth to live as the children of God. Amen. Have you ever gotten into a tussle over something? Almost a physical tussle. My brothers and I used to do that. Uh, and my mom usually, especially during the summertime, because we were all home together, would be the one to break that up. But sometimes we would get into a tussle. I remember one time in particular, I was standing a few steps up on a stairway from my brother Mark, and he started to come after me, and my foot went out and connected with his bottom lip. I don't know how that <laughs> happened. And I forget, I had something that he wanted, and I gave him something he didn't want. I've still not lived that down. Oftentimes, when we do get into tussles, it's because we are either jealously guarding something or because we are trying to get something that does not belong to us that somebody else has and we desperately want. And be certain about this, it does not have to be something physical. It can be something emotional. It can be something spiritual. It can be any number of things. When I moved to Wilmore in February of 1997, I did not anticipate that my walk with the Lord would lead me into a tussle with Him. In fact, I thought just the opposite. I thought I was doing really well, and I thought that I'm on track, I'm, I'm going to be starting seminary, and... By the time the summer of Feb of February, the summer of 1997 came around, I began sensing that the Lord wanted something from me that I was not prepared to surrender. And that sense grew as July came into August and as August came into September. And I spent probably most of my days, those two months, trying to figure out how to get away from Jesus. It was not until early October that the truth finally came out in my life. And I admitted to myself and, and to a few close friends what was going on. And from the point of that admission until, I don't know, maybe six, seven months later, it felt like I was spiritually on an operating table and that the Lord was digging into my soul and pulling out and showing me things and healing things and doing things that I never, in, in my wildest dreams anticipated would be possible. I thought for the longest time that I could put my Christian face on it and bluff my way through. And I'm so glad that, the, that there came a time when I finally ended that tussle with the Lord. Now, be sure, <laughs> as that tussle ended, there were others that began, <laughs> okay? And I say all of that to say this to us tonight. If we are not, in some sense, fighting with the Lord in our prayers, something is wrong. If we are coming to Jesus leaving our laundry list and walking away satisfied that we have done our duty for the day? We are missing it. 
To really pray is to tussle with Jesus. The saints know this. They have, this is what St. John of the Cross dealt with in his dark night of the soul. This is what Oswald Chambers dealt with for five years as he waited for the Lord to give him permission to go, to move on. There was this constant questioning, this constant tussle going on with Jesus. And for Oswald Chambers, at least, all that the Lord wanted from him was for him to stay still. And that's the hardest thing in the world for somebody who has an idea that his ministry should be thus and such. Prayer, when it comes down to it, is you and I standing with Jesus, fighting ourselves, that we might let go of what the Lord is claiming possession of. God tells us from almost the very beginning that he is a jealous God. We see it in the Garden of Eden. He says it explicitly to Moses on Mount Sinai. I am a jealous God. You shall have no other gods before me. He wants that pride of place. He wants us to understand that our good, our spiritual health can only be found when we surrender to him the very things that Adam and Eve tried to grab the very things that Israel and Judah over and over and over again were trying to grab and cling to so much so that the Lord had to send both nations into exile what we see in the gospel reading from John's gospel tonight is that tussle. We see the religious leaders poking at Jesus. Jesus is coming back at them saying who he is and they're saying prove it. And then when he says what the truth is, they pick up stones and they're going to try to stone him to death. How many times in our prayer life do we express frustration that the Lord has not heard our plans? How many times in our prayer lives have we walked away because we don't want to hear what the Holy Spirit might say to us. And I'm going to, I'm going to step on my toes and maybe some others tonight. How many times have we claimed that we are not hearing from God as we pray when in fact we are hearing but we don't like the answer? This is tough stuff. But this is what the Lord was going back and forth with, with the religious leaders in Jerusalem about. Prove it, they said. And he said, look, you've seen my works. Are you going to stone somebody who does the works of God? Oswald Chambers, like, like all great mystics of the faith, and yes, I am discovering, perhaps rediscovering, that spiritually speaking, I'm a mystic. And really, when push comes to shove, that's really the centerpiece of this community. We come together in prayer as our, our primary charism, our primary gift, our primary mission. And to make the choice to live that hidden life of prayer, at least hidden from the world, if not from each other, is to understand that we must always go deeper with Jesus. 
And to understand that, we must, we must get, not only that we must decrease so that he can increase, but at some point we have to see how this works. And, and I don't know if you have read uh, Prayer in the Father's Hearing, which is the, the devotional for today by Chambers. When the Son of God prays, he is mindful and consciously aware of only his Father. God always hears the prayers of his Son, and that the Son of God has been formed in me, in you, the Father will always hear my prayers. In other words, if Jesus is living in our lives in such a way that we are surrendering to him daily, and by surrender I mean deeply listening, I mean really questioning what our choices would be in the light of what the gospel says to us. But I must see to it that the Son of God is exhibited in my human flesh. And then he quotes, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. That is, your body is the Bethlehem of God's Son. We call Mary the Blessed Virgin. We call her the Theotokos, the God-bearer, the mother of God. What are we as Christians if we are not Theotokos, God-bearers? As we are baptized, as we receive Holy Communion, we are filled with the presence of Almighty God. He comes to literally live in us. The Orthodox churches would take it a step further and say, not only does he come to live in us, he wants to make us him. It's called the, the uh, uh, Theo... Oh, I'm going to blank now. It's close to theophany. It's the, their doctrine of the goal of the Christian life is to become more and more what God is. Okay? And so Chambers goes on, is the Son of God being given his opportunity to work in me? Am I tussling with him? And if I am, hopefully I am, hopefully he is winning. Because it's only by struggle. Look at Jacob wrestling with the angel. It's only in that struggle that we come to realize that we don't want to win that battle. It's only in tussling with the Lord that we discover that we really want to lose and we want Him to win. Because that's the only way that peace is going to enter our lives. His life being worked out in me exactly as it was worked out in His life while here on earth when I come into contact with every, the everyday occurrences of life as an ordinary human being is the prayer of God's eternal Son to His Father being prayed in me. Am I losing myself in Jesus? Am I asking Him difficult questions listening to His answer as found in Scripture and as found in our contemplation of Scripture? And is he winning the argument? I think it's so easy for us to fall into the trap of believing that it's all about offering our petitions and intercessions and we pat ourselves on the back not with pride but with yes I did it it you know because it's difficult to surrender even to that level today as I was driving to work and I'm going to close just momentarily here I got out the Anglican prayer beads and I started in with the Jesus prayer. 
and there were so many distractions. And in the midst, in fact, at the very center of those distractions was the thought rising within my heart, you know, I really don't want to do this right now. I really don't want to do this right now. I really, Lord, do you hear this? I don't want to do this right now. And I trudged through. It wasn't perfect. It wasn't pretty. But it was a statement to myself and to Jesus that I wanted to persevere. And by the time I got to this afternoon, I could not get my brain to focus on anything. The last half hour at the prison, I'm like, ugh, trying to find something to do that I could focus on, and I couldn't. So I left, got in the car, got some gas, got back in the car, and I'm like, Lord, how come I can't get this? How come I can't turn this on like a switch? And that's when he moved in my heart. And when he speaks, it's not, it's not gonna be a parting of the clouds and you know a ray of sunshine and an angelic chorus singing hallelujah. It's going to be that still small voice in the heart. And I knew that I needed to do this. Got it out. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Spirit, and Lord, a rosary that I will argue and lose. And as I prayed the Jesus prayer, not only was something going on in here, I mean like physically, okay? I mean like the, the butterflies, like when you're first in love and you have that crush, when you're near that one that you, that you love, and you, you know, just the, right in here. Not only was that going on, especially, especially as I was saying, the name of Jesus with each bead. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God. But when I came to this last phrase, have mercy on me, a sinner. There was such delight. Why? Because I found as I was praying that he was showing me still more places in my life where I'm attempting to tussle with him and where I have not surrendered. And by the time I got to the third round of Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, I was savoring every word and he was in my mind's eye showing me pictures and bringing to mind what I still have not completely surrendered. He does that. He does it powerfully. What I could not get to this morning because of my flesh, the Spirit of God made possible for me this afternoon. And business was done. Something was surrendered. The tussle was over, and praise God, he won. That is prayer. That is how to listen to Jesus. Don't be afraid to fight. When he says, put your dukes up, do it. Because he's got something in store. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for fighting us. Thank you for coming back. Each time we throw something up in your face, you come back with, yeah, but, and there's no way that we can get around it. Just as with the religious leaders, so with us. 
Different person, different battle, different if issue, different tussle. Lord Jesus, come into our hearts. Show us what we have not surrendered. And we will give you glory. We ask this in your holy and precious name. 